On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, the 76ers pick up their sixth win in a row after a 20-point victory over the Detroit Pistons. Keith and I break it all down, how it looked on Wednesday night, right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, you are locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97.5 The Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia alongside my co-host, Keith Pompey, Sixers beat writer for TheInquire.com. What's going on, Keith? Nada, man, nada. Just watch covering another victory yesterday. I guess that's boring at this point, covering another victory. Nah, <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> Thanks for making Locked On 76 is your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On 76 is free and available on all platforms, including right here on YouTube at Locked On 76 as well. Keith, we do have to talk about the victory, what took place, how it went down. And in the final segment, we'll also talk about what's going on around the Atlantic Division because this is a pretty good division, it seems right now in the uh, in the Sixers uh, division overall. So we'll get to that a little bit later. But first, they are now 18 and 12, Keith. They've won six games in a row, all at home during the seven-game homestand. One more to go on Friday. Tomorrow, they host the Los Angeles Clippers, who had the Charlotte Hornets last night. And, uh, Keith, they just continue to get it done. And I know one of the things that you've talked about before is when you play a bad team, jump on them early, don't let them back in it. And that's exactly what the Sixers did. Yeah, they said mama said knock you out. It's like, nah. But nah, yeah, they 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 destroyed them. I mean, they had to. I mean, it was one of those things where the Sixers, I forget the exact minute, but it was like, I believe like the six twenty something mark of the first quarter. They they took the lead for good and never surrendered it. At one point they were up by twenty one points. Um, you know, it, it was, you know, at the end of the day, it was one of those games where you look at it and you say, hey, we got to win. We got our 18th victory. We got our sixth win in a row. No one's healthy. And we were able to rest our starters. So I, I feel like for the Sixers, that was the best thing going. And and let's face it, it's better to win this game than than get upset in this game. So it was a good night for them. I thought one of the things that they did real early is you talked about taking the lead in the first quarter and never giving it up. Tobias Harris had a bucket, tied it up at 12 uh, in the first, to your point. And then basically from there on, you know, no issues. Uh, but they forced seven turnovers, Keith in, that, Keith, in that first quarter. And I thought that was a big part of it. Forcing the seven turnovers, 22 overall in the night, leading to 36 points for the Sixers. Oftentimes we talk about it being the other way where the Sixers are the ones turning the ball over at a very high rate. And uh, they were able to force those turnovers to a Pistons team, speeding them up a little bit, maybe getting them a little bit uncomfortable, second night of a back-to-back. -back. And with that, they were able to, to, to use that as a, 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 a key point of how they were able to set the tone early. Now, they were only up eight points after the first quarter, and but they were up 12, 13 at, at the break. Uh, after the second quarter so they did their job man it may not have been 20 points at the break like we saw some of those lopsided scores with the celtics 71 to 40 whatever and 91 points in the first half of the brooklyn nets as they won their seventh game in a row last night the Sixers just simply did their job and i thought the defense was a big part of that in the first half because they weren't shooting all that great yeah, they did. They did. And, and and the thing is, this is one of those games, like you said, they sped them up. They did a lot of things. But also, like, I, I can't wait until – I mean, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. But I can't wait until they play the Clippers because it got to a point where some of those passes, it was like, dog, I know you're not going to do that bounce pass right yeah. now. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was like a lot of inexperience. But, you know, the, the Sixers played them. But, like, again, they played them well. They, they, they forced turnovers, but I, I feel like uh, Detroit really didn't help itself, and the Sixers took full advantage of it. As they should. Yeah, and you're right. Detroit, uh, an eight-win team, they're eight and 20, 26 Six, right now. Yeah, yeah. Eight and 26. Yeah, after that loss, and 
if they look every bit of that. They miss Cade Cunningham, and Jay Nivey is going to be a, a player. Uh, but right now, he can't carry this franchise and lead them to wins. Jalen Duran, the Philadelphia product, he's a player. But again, they still have a ways to go. And even their leading scorer on the season with 21 points tonight, Boyan Bogdanovich, he only had 10. So I, I thought the front court of P.J. Tucker and Tobias Harris did a pretty solid job with that front line of Isaiah Stewart and Boyan Bogdanovich. Jalen Duran got into foul trouble uh, against Joel Embiid early on, and you knew it was going to happen. He does that to veterans. So with a young player, 19 years old, youngest player in the NBA, he's going to have his troubles. He's going to have his challenges against a player like Joel Embiid. So, again, the defense early on, uh, getting them in that foul trouble, forcing those turnovers, and just simply making enough shots. And Tobias Harris had eight points in that first quarter. He only played four minutes and 33 seconds because he got his own foul trouble. But then James Harden picked up the slack where he had 12 in the opening frame uh, for, the, for the Sixers to help them out as Tobias Harris exited. Joel and B started off one for four from the floor, and they just simply weren't doing and executing like like we know with Joel and B getting the looks, especially when you have those younger guys like that. He got to the free throw line, but he's just simply trying to overpower those guys. And he had one play, Keith, where he had a travel call, and he walked because he caught it. Stewart fell to the floor. He was so wide open and was surprised he was so wide open. He just didn't dribble. He just took his steps and thought he took two. When he took three, they caught him for the travel. He looked at the officials like, what did I do? That's how easy it was for them uh, on, on Wednesday night. Yeah, it was it was easy. That was the worst team I've seen all year. I'm going to be honest with you. That Detroit team is bad. It's, it's bad. It's bad. Two more with them. Uh, as they have a two-game series in January, by the way, January 8th and January 10th, home and home in Detroit for the game two, and the final one, January 10th, back here in Philadelphia uh, for that home and home series after the Sixers come back from that that road trip. All right, when we come back, Keith, we'll dive into it a little bit more. We got to talk about Embiid, his night, some of the other key players in this one as they help the Sixers win by 20, 113-93. Uh, we'll talk about more of that when we get back next right here, Locked On 76ers. Okay, right now let's talk about let's let's talk about NHSTA, right? For the holiday season impaired driving, right? Did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. And if if the if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends can tell. Your coworkers can tell. Even your parents can tell. Everyone can tell. So what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're not. Because the bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI, paid for NHSTA. <laughs> Thank you for making Locked On 76 as your first listen every day. Make sure to check out Locked On Sports today, the biggest stories around the sports world in 20 minutes or less, plus instant reactions, game recaps, and Locked On's take of the day. Locked On Sports today, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Keith, um, not a high-scoring game from anyone on the 76ers uh, last night, uh, but they got – a lot of contributions, 22 points and 10 rebounds for Joel Embiid. Uh, that was a, a game high with the 22 points. The 10 rebounds was a game and team high tied with P.J. Tucker, pardon me, who also had 10. Tobias Harris finished with 17, 15 for James Harden, and 11 for George Niang, 10 for uh, – uh, who, who had 10 off the bench uh, for them? Uh, Montrez. Montrez Harrell had it, and he only played 
like seven minutes. Nine. Minutes. He played nine minutes and nine 30 minutes. seconds. Yeah. And still had, you know, those 10 points in those nine minutes. So he gave a lot of really good activity on the offensive end in the time that, that he was there. He took advantage, Keith, of his minutes. So, again, not a big scoring output, but tonight, as Joel Embiid struggled from the floor, James Harden, same. Tobias Harris, very efficient again. Uh, once again, just missing two shots uh, on the night. They didn't need an outburst from any of them. They just spread the wealth around with six players in double figures, plus two players with Shake Milton and Daniel House, each scoring nine. Just a good team effort offensively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. It was. But, you know, it was funny, though, because when you were in the locker room, you know, typically after they win a game, a lot of guys are fired up, psyched up, you know, this and that. Um, you know, James was quiet at his locker and then just moseyed on out of the locker room. Um, you know, uh, George Niang was kind of shocked that people wanted to talk to him after the game. And all he talked about is, hey, man, I shot uh, three for 11 on threes, right? You know, Tobias was kind of like, you know, whatever. Joel was blah. And, and then Doc was like, hey, the best thing we could do is that no one got hurt. So it was kind of weird because, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you're talking about how, how they played, but the reality to me really set in like, yeah, we played okay in our eyes. It was just that this team wasn't good. And the funny thing is not funny, but today at shoot around or yesterday at shoot around, it was one of those things when we got in there, they were doing extra work with the backups. The backups, they were running plays and doing things with them. So I kind of figured, like, they kind of knew that they were going to destroy these guys and get these stats. So it was like, I don't want to say a preseason game, but it was one of those things like, this really didn't matter. It didn't count. And like you said, I mean, we got, what, six guys that scored in double figures, right? Um, defensively, they held the team to 39%. But Joel and all the rest of the guys were looking at it like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And to me, I kind of like that because in the past it was rah, 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 rah. You know what I mean? Over beating bum squads. And today or yesterday it was, hey, we got uh, the Clippers coming up next. Yeah, not overlooking Detroit, but we did what we were supposed to do against mm -hmm. Detroit. Yeah. And and you're right, shooting 39%. Uh, the Sixers also had a big time advantage in terms of field goal attempts because they forced those turnovers. So they were uh, plus double figures in field goal attempts and field goals made in this one because uh, of the fact that they were able to turn the ball over, so, turn Detroit over so much on Wednesday night that they were able to get those extra shot opportunities in this one so uh, just good overall and they also got keith 47 points from the bench as we've talked about it a lot of times you talk about pointing out being at the shoot around this morning or yesterday morning that they worked a lot with those guys and those guys were needed last night because he went to milton house played well niang again montrez harrell while he only played the nine minutes close to 10. uh they gave production positive production in the minutes that they were on the floor even though niang shot three for ten or three for 11 and three for 12 overall, he got good shots up. You just missed them. And yeah. you can't complain about him, especially when you're blowing out a team like they did tonight. He got good looks. He has a quick trigger when that ball swings to him. So, you know, nothing to really even complain about. You just hope that, as he said, I had a poor shooting night. I will be better against the Clippers on Friday night. So the bench, good production starters. Also, P.J. Tucker didn't score, but he got you 10 rebounds. I even took phone calls after the game, Keith. And people complaining again about P.J. Tucker and what does he do? And I'm like, played 25 minutes. He played solid defense where his his man didn't really score, Isaiah Stewart. And same thing with Tobias Harris, how, whoever you felt was defending at the time. They didn't score. And he had 10 rebounds. <laughs> what do you want? Yeah, but you know what, D? I, I, I really, it's hard for me to overhype what they did because I expected them to do all this. Oh, yeah. I, and I wasn't you, even you know overhyping it. it. Yeah. It oh, no, no, not, and you're not overhyping it. It's like, but when I'm look like, I know they got good shots and they all did everything they did. And yeah, him, of course, people like, yeah, the 10 rebounds, that's crazy. Like, because yeah, he missed three shots, but he had 10 rebounds, a, a season high, 
you know, he had 10 and he only played 21 minutes, right? Like if he wanted to, this dude could have and walked away with eight points if he wanted to, because the competition just wasn't there. You know what I mean? It was, it was like, I mean, and, and nothing against Detroit and I'm, I'm sorry, but it was like, they did everything that we expected them to do against these guys. I yeah. mean, actually, you know, I'm a little, if I'm you're looking at Shake Milton, you're like, bro, you shot three for eight in 32 minutes. You're supposed to get up at least 12 shots, you know what I mean, like against this team. So, yeah, it wasn't really – yeah, this is one of those things where it's hard to evaluate what they did because they were way better than this team. And it showed. And that's yeah. why they had picked up their sixth game in a row. They did what they were supposed to do. Next up the Los Angeles Clippers. And before we get to the Clippers, we need to talk about the division, Keith, because quietly it's turned into one of the better divisions in basketball. We'll let you know what happened around the league. And then again, the Knicks and the Sixers, they get on, they get it on on Christmas Day. It should be a fun one. Uh, and we'll get to the division on the other side as the Sixers pick up their six in a row, now 18 and 12, fifth in the Eastern Conference. I got to tell you, our show here, Locked On 76ers, is brought to you by BetterHelp. The show is sponsored by BetterHelp, and BetterHelp have been talking to you about this before. Unfortunately, sometimes life can get in the way of a lot of things. It's the holiday season. You're down on yourself, maybe feeling like, hey, I don't have enough to get my loved ones, my friends, what I really would like to get them for the holiday season, maybe even dealing with some loss. And with that, you might want to speak with someone. So unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel a little bit stuck. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, a new relationship, becoming a parent, the holidays. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills while making the therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine that you call you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient and accessible anywhere, and it's 100% online. Uh, as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online, plus it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be any simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. All right, Keith, after the Sixers win their game, 18 and 12, they sit in the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. They are a game back of the Brooklyn Nets, who are 20 and 12. They've been on a roll, nine and one in their last 10, and they won their last seven. The New York Knicks, before last night's loss to the Toronto Raptors, where Pascal Siakam put 52 on the Knicks in the garden. That's a big time performance. They have won eight games in a row. So, Keith, if you look at the eight that they won, the 11 here combined between the two. You're looking at 19 uh, wins between, pardon me, 13 and eight. You're looking at 21 wins between these three teams in a row in the Atlantic Division. And, hey, man, they're playing some really good basketball, both Brooklyn and New York around the Sixers. So the division is looking pretty good. And even though Boston has lost their last three, Keith, they are 22 and 10. The Atlantic Division is pretty tough. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, and it's funny because not funny, but, you know, I honestly think the Atlantic division has been um, the best division in basketball for a while now um, is in the East, because you look at Boston, you look at what the Sixers have been doing the last couple of years, you know, Brooklyn, you know, uh, underachieved at times in the playoffs, but they have the star power. And then you had Toronto. It just seems like this year, so far, it's the Knicks and Toronto is the team that's struggling. So when you look at it, you know, there's five teams and there's always four of them who've been making the playoffs and, and been playing well. You know, unfortunately, a lot of the teams keep knocking each other off. 
because uh, you got Brooklyn losing to Boston last year. The Sixers knocked off the Toronto Raptors. But, um, but yeah, you, you look at it and, and you have to say that at least in the Eastern Conference, this is uh, the best division in the league the last several years. They've been pretty good this season for sure. I, I am a bit surprised that New York is playing at the level that they are playing, just to be perfectly honest. And even with Brooklyn, with all the turmoil that they faced early on with Kyrie Irving, the Ben Simmons situation. And while everyone would point the finger at Kevin Durant and, and say all these things about him, he just quietly went on and kept averaging 30 points a game. And right now they have won again, seven games in a row. They blew out, and I mean blew out the Golden State Warriors uh, by a final score, Keith, on Wednesday night, 143-113, and it wasn't even close. Obviously, 30 points is not even close in that one. Boston fell by five to the Indiana Pacers last night, and we already mentioned Toronto and New York facing each other with the Raptors stealing one on the road in the garden. But these teams are good, man, and we'll see how long they can all sustain this and keep this, this going because, as you mentioned, they're a tough division. Let's see how good they really are as they all try to continue and jockeying for position in the Eastern Conference in terms of standings. And we'll start to see them play each other a little bit more. Sixers played the Raptors. Raptors played the Knicks. Then we need to see, again, Boston and, and Brooklyn once again pl playing the Sixers. We can't wait to see those guys face off. All fully healthy, by the way, to see where they stand up, where they stack up in the division and the conference overall. That'll do it for us, and we thank you for making Locked On 76 as your first listen today. Now make Locked On Sports today your second listen, where Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Locked On Sports Today podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Keith, do you mind letting the good people know where they can find us? Yeah, like my man D just said, wherever you get your podcast, you can get the Locked On 76ers podcast as well. But you can also go to our YouTube and, and get our YouTube channel. But make sure when you do that, make sure you click on the Liberty Bell and you become a new subscriber. Tonight, do yourself a favor and go to 97.5 FM and listen to D on the Divine Giving Show from 7 to 10 tonight. From 7 to 10 tonight right on 97.5 fm you can also follow my man on twitter at divine g 975 you can follow me on twitter at pompey on sixers and you can read my articles in the philadelphia inquire inquire.com all right keith thanks man appreciate everybody out there for listening again tomorrow we'll get together preview the final game of the seven game homestand as the sixers look to stay undefeated hosting the Los Angeles Clippers on Friday night. Keith, thanks, man. Really appreciate it as always. Talk to you tomorrow. All right, bro. Peace. All right, man.